Well, now that we've finished solving that problem, uh, my character gets on a horse and says goodbye to you and you and you and you and you. Um, I don't have to be part of this charade anymore. I'm leaving. Uh, so, so long and thanks for the party. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How To Be A Great Player. Today we're talking about keeping your party together. Keeping it together. And it's a question that I was asked, I believe on the Discord channel or perhaps it was on one of the live streams. But the question was asked, how do you keep your party together once you've started playing? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's three steps that you can take, three critical moments that you as the player can take to keep your party together, and that starts even before the first game. So these are my steps and processes that I try and do to keep my party together well into and beyond the campaign. So, first of all, we look at the idea of before the game. That's right, how do you keep your party together before you've even started playing? Well, before the game, we look at things like party alignment. And I did a video a couple of weeks ago where we looked at about how you align the party together so they're going to want to stay together. But by looking at the alignment of the party, and we're not talking good, neutral and evil, we're talking about making sure the party works together and would want to work together later on, you can already start to keep the party cohesion for later on in the game. If you are creating a necromancer and a paladin and a thief and a druid who doesn't care, why would they stay together after the first mission? You've got to think about that before the game even starts. So there is something to look at your alignment. The intention and the direction that the game is going to go in. There is nothing worse than four or five players sitting together making their characters and not discussing the intention of their character and the direction they want the game to go in. It's so easy to look across from the table and say, I'm creating a barbarian and I would quite like to explore the idea of leading an army. What do you guys want to do? Oh, you're creating a grave robber who wants to go and find relics. You are creating a starship captain. Do you know what game we're playing? Because you're not going to fit, really. Oh, you're a sea captain. And you want to trade corn. Okay, let's look at this and try and change our intentions. What if you were a sea captain of a military vessel? My character can then be more interested in naval conquest. And what if you were looking for relics at sea um, of a lost empire or something along those lines? So by speaking about the intention and the direction in which you want the campaign to go, you already start to look for areas where you go, well, why would I ever want to do that? My character doesn't want to do that. My character wants to grow potatoes. Then there is this social contract. And there are many videos from very many YouTubers out there on the unwritten social contract. And I feel like we should write it down because everyone kind of agrees on what it is. The social contract, in a role-playing game anyway, mandates that it's the responsibility of the players to make sure that their party is going to stick together and work together. Now, by stick together, that doesn't mean you can't split the party up from time to time, but generally speaking, as a player, you should have in the back of your mind, it is far more difficult for the GM to run a game with players, characters running in all different directions, so you should try and pull the party back together. It is also your responsibility to keep the party together once the game is going. It is not the GM's responsibility. They're busy running a world full of NPCs. The least you could do was help look out for a group of four or five people. So the social contract places the burden of keeping the party together on you and your fellow players. This is worth reminding your fellow players of. Some new players might even not know about these kinds of social contracts and older ones might go, well, I don't care. I'm a role player and I'm going to play my character how they like. So if they don't like your character, my character is going to leave. In which case, you can politely request that they leave now rather than wait for three months, get into the middle of a campaign and then leave. Because, well, what's the point? So by heading off all of these issues before the game starts, you've successfully increased the chances of your party staying together. But wait, there's more. 
in the very first game not even in well could be in session zero depending on how your gm runs session zero but in your first game your character needs to interact with the other characters so many times i've run a session zero where the whole purpose is to see how the party works together and how the mechanics are going to work together and the setting of the world and all those kinds of things and the players never have their characters interact with one another you don't even say good morning when the dwarf walks down the stairs into the main room of the inn. Don't you normally say good morning when you see your fellow housemates walking around? Well, I certainly do, but why don't you then do that in role-playing? Oh, well, because it's not necessary. It is! The same reason why we say these things to each other in real life needs to translate to our characters. If my character never acknowledges your character's existence, does not acknowledge your character's achievements, goals, breakthroughs, or otherwise successes, why would my character want to hang around with your character? If there's no social interaction, then there's no point, really. Then they are just working together because some non-existent entity said that they should. That doesn't make sense. Let them interact. Let them commit to one another. I know this sounds like a crazy idea, but what's wrong with having a character go, you know what? I like you. I like your smile and I like the cut of your jib. Let's work together. How about it then? We've got this bounty to go and find this knoll that's been causing problems in the town. Oh, I think the two of us could make quite a good team. As a matter of fact, old you wizard, you look like you're up to snuff. Why don't you join us? It's as simple as that. Engaging your fellow characters to come and work with you and committing to working with them is great. Build into those relationships and then during and after the game, preferably after, during if you've got downtime, sit with your fellow players and say, I love how our characters are coming together. I think that I want my character to maybe start falling in love with your character too much. Okay, how about my character starts to admire your character in terms of their strength and physique and wants to try and learn from your character. Happy with that? Great stuff. So you build and you plan in the first game so that there is this established desire to want to work together. It's important to do it. Then, during the game, reaffirm, reaffirm. And you should do this in real life as well if you have friends. Hey, friend, you're brilliant. You're just great. I like having you around. Thank you for being in my life. How many times have you said that to your close friends? I know I certainly haven't said it enough and I will continue to strive to say it more often. Reaffirm between your characters. You know, the way you handled that dialogue, that diplomatic incident was just brilliant. It was really inspirational, actually. I'd like to read the books that you're, you, you read up on. Oh, you haven't? Well, perhaps um, we can spend some evenings around a campfire talking about it. You do it. Just do it. Trust me. Mutual goals. So now that we've found this Minotaur and brought him to justice, what are you doing next? And how, how can I support you? How can my character support your character? Yes, I know. It takes the bigger person to offer support to somebody else. Be the bigger person. You can do it. I have faith in you. Offer support to your fellow player characters. It's amazing. Oh, you've got that interesting backstory. You want to go and hunt down dragons. It wasn't my character's plan to do that. My character does plan on taking over the world, but maybe I can use your dragons to take over the world. <laughs> Sorry, that's my GM coming through. But it is about finding mutual goals, finding the reason why your character would want to work together, and then doing it. So by now, you've got a pre-game plan as to how your characters are going to work together. You've had the first game where you've reaffirmed, where you have spoken about, where you have confirmed that you want to work together. And now during the game, you continuously go through this reaffirmation of why your characters are together, why your character likes the other character, your mutual goals, seeking those out, continuously talking to your fellow characters. What is it that you... Yeah, that's what... Yeah, I thought so. I'll support you on that one. Hey, would you support me? I need to go and do a little thing. It's small it's short it won't take very long let's go and do it work through that cycle continuously and your group will stay together you will always keep it together by simply following those few little steps it sounds simple but so many people fail to do it anyway until next time i wish you and yours the very happiest of playing so let me get this straight if i like you 
but I subscribe to your way of thinking, you're going to ring a bell so that you can get alerted to every time we make a decision? 